Amityville 3D. There's so much to say about this travesty. I'm not exactly sure where to start. First of all, for my after portion, yes, I did watch the film in 3D and in 2D um, for the first time. And each time I watched it, it got a little worse. The first time I saw the film, I actually kind of liked it. Um, I think part of it was just the 3D, and I was like, this is awesome. Getting to see a 80s horror movie in th that was originally 3D in 3D for my first viewing. I was so stoked. I was so excited. But it really doesn't translate well. And especially after re-watching it, which I've been doing for this study. Man, especially after the major, major step up of Amityville 2, The Possession, Amityville 3D is a big step down, not only from 2, but from the original film. I don't know what they were thinking. We also need to keep in mind, this is the, I believe, the only PG film in the entirety of the franchise. Um, and this is the last theatrical film for a very long time. Amityville 3D, <laughs> where to start? Um, I, I guess why not start with the good things? There's very little good things to say about this, so I, um, I actually was fairly impressed with some of the acting in the film. This is Meg Ryan's, I believe it's her first movie, if not one of her earliest pictures, but she's not really the one that sticks out in my mind. The one who sticks out is Lori Loughlin. You know, Aunt Becky from Full House, which ironically, before I watched Amityville 3D, I ended up watching a um, an episode of Full House, and then I got to, spoiler alert, I got to watch her die in Amityville 3D. So if you really hate Full House, Amityville 3D is a great watch. But, um, oh gosh, her death is actually really creepy because it's really subtle that's what i love about it and i love that she's dripping wet and she um her mother sees her walk up in the house and walk into the room which by the way the room she chooses is the room that the kids are in in the original film which i thought was a great nod that the child in the third one is rooming in in the same room that the child, the children, in the original film are. Um, the whole, uh, I don't even know, this franchise messes with my mind, man. Okay, so in the original, there's this whole concept of there's something in this house that's trying to consume people, that's trying to kill them or whatever, uh, whatever you want to say. In the second one, it's a little bit more specific. Um, there's demonic possession. That's the cause of the main thing. And also that it was on an Indian burial ground and it was a chief and the chief was very angry and the chief exacted revenge through, um, well, the second movie calls him Sonny. This was another weird thing about Amityville, this franchise. The original refers to the real names, the DeFeo clan. The second one, which is about the DeFeo murders, um, gives a completely different name. But in Amityville 3D, the sequel, the following year, refers to them as the DeFeo murders again. I thought that was so strange because most, I mean, Dino, who's the top dog for Amityville 2 and 3D, it's the same dude. So what's going on? I don't know. There's kind of a famous director who directs this, though. I don't know why he went and directed Amityville 3D other than just to do something near the end of his life, but he had done some much more well-respected things than Amityville 3D. I mean, come on. The, um... 
let's talk about the ripoff moments in this movie. Okay, so this girl sees something in um, photos, which honestly, every time I see it, I see the same thing, and it bothers me every time. It is completely and utterly the omen. That's what it is, and it's not even good. The little, like, demonic entity that we see on the photo looks like crap. It's just awful. I just, oh, man. Okay, so I guess, I don't know, maybe the audience really wanted to see whatever this entity was that was controlling the house. Um... I don't, I never personally had a desire to see what that looked like um, in the first two pictures. I just wanted to see what were the crazy things that were going on in the house. And just the whole mentality of this piece um, is very, very poor. A lot of it's weird things like, let me hold a boom mic up close to you so we can see it's in 3D. And... That's like right before what's supposed to be a really intense climax. Why? Other than just for the 3D effect. Oh my gosh. Friday the 13th 3D is guilty of the same thing though. Um, let's see. Okay, so we see the entity, right? this whatever this demonic thing maybe the indian chief i don't know it's never really made clear in amityville 3d it comes up at the end and it blows fire and it looks horrible and i don't mean that in a good way in that oh my gosh it's so great it looks so horrific i mean it looks terrible and any sense of momentum that the piece had gotten after that point, because the piece really doesn't have a lot of momentum throughout the whole picture. Really, the only truly effective moment is the build-up to Lori Loughlin's death, her actual really artistically done death scene. Um, and really, after that, the whole piece falls apart. And the piece is it's falling apart at the seams to begin with. Um, I will say that it's great to still see that house. I mean, that house to horror fans. I know this is one of the lesser of the major franchises. Um, yeah, it's definitely one of the lesser ones. I think Hellraiser is even more known than the Amityville. But... It's that house is iconic, and I love seeing that house. It looks great. Um, did the film work better in 2D or in 3D? Well, the film's pretty terrible either way. I will say that when the 3D on this 3D Blu ray works, it it's amazing. I think the best 3D effect is there's a car crash sequence where a pole shoots out at you and that works like magic it just looks so awesome but there's also this floating green ball at the beginning of the picture and the blu-ray has something that we call ghosting which is when the 3d image doesn't sync up and you can see like the through like the two different images that are trying to form a cohesive whole and it looks awful so certain moments work great in 3D, certain moments work better in the 2D version of the film. Is this a film that is good other than Lori Loughlin's death? No, but Lori Loughlin's death saves it from being god-awful. It's just... I think Lori Loughlin's death is actually worth, the, worth watching the whole thing because it's so interesting. Um, and especially for full house for full house fans out there, it's really surprising watching this girl die, and she's the most sympathetic character in the entire piece too. Um, anyways, tomorrow night we're getting into the fourth week. It's going to be Amityville for the Evil Escapes, and I will be discussing to you my thoughts, my initial thoughts stepping into Amityville four tomorrow.